So welcome to the last lecture in equations and inequalities. So in this lecture, let's discuss inequalities. So what are inequalities? So inequalities, for example, any example, for example, let's take an inequality x greater than or equal to 4. So anything that contains greater than, less than, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So the expressions, the equations are called inequalities. Right? So any equations that contain these are called inequalities. So an example of how to represent this inequality. The most common method of representation is by using a number line. So where we draw a line and we number the line and in the line we choose the line the point where we are including the value and we are going to draw an arrow that represents that it is greater than and it is towards infinity. So there is no end point here so it is just drawing as a infinity. So this is generally one of the ways we, we can represent this. There is one another two ways that are represented. One is the set notation where we say that so the value is x such that x is less than or equal to sorry x is greater than or equal to 4 or the other way is to represent by interval notation so which can be written as closed interval 4 comma infinity so but how do we know what type of interval notation for what values we have to use so for this we have a small table as a reference so this is the table of reference that you can use to indicate different sets of values. So for example, if you have all real numbers between two different numbers a and b but not including those numbers, so we write it as x such that a less than x less than b. Remember that less than excludes the value less than or equal to includes the value. So it can be applied to greater than as well, greater than or equal to as well. So less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to becomes they include the values that you are writing before them. Greater than and less than excludes the value that you are writing before them. So if you have our values between A and B but you don't want to include A and B we can write it this way or we write it as parenthesis A and B. So parenthesis A comma B. So parenthesis is used for excluding values. Square brackets are generally used for including the value. So when you write a number before, so if you have a, see a uh, parenthesis before the number, it means that that number is not included in the set. And if you use a square bracket, it means that it is included in the set. Let's take another example. Let's say it is less than a. So all numbers, let's start with all numbers greater than a. So in set notation it is written as x such that it is x greater than a. In interval notation we can write it as open interval a comma infinity. So whenever we write this there are two ways of uh, saying them. This is called as an open interval and the square brackets are called closed intervals. Right? So open interval a comma infinity. Notice that it is starting from a and it is greater than a so it can go until infinity. Next if you have less than b. So we write it as x such that x is less than b. So or we can write it as open interval negative infinity comma b. Notice that we are not including b here. Right next one let us say we have greater than or equal to a. So then it is x such that x greater than or equal to a. So that will become closed interval a comma infinity. For infinity always write for infinity always represent using open intervals. Right? Whenever you have an infinity you always have to use open intervals. right right next to them. Next one is less than 
or e equal to b. So in set notation it becomes x such that x less than or equal to b. So here it become open interval negative infinity comma b closed interval. So this is the representation when you want to less than or including b. Next between a e and b excluding a comma b. So when you want to exclude the values we write it such that x such that a is less than x less than b. So or it can be written as open interval a comma b. Now between a comma b but it includes a only then how will you write this x such that a less than or equal to x less than b then it becomes open inter closed interval a comma b open interval next one let's try another one which is between a and b including b then it becomes x such that x so a less than x less than or equal to b then it's written as open interval a comma b closed interval right whichever one is included right next to that right closed interval that's the only way you can write them next between a comma b and includes a and b then we write it as x such that a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b so for both of them we write closed interval next one if you have values that are greater than b and less than a so how will you write this now so it's x such that x less than a or x greater than b so r here represents the combination of both of them right and if you have the interval notation how will you write this so write each of them separately so which is minus infinity comma a and b comma infinity but put a union symbol in the middle so union here represents that it's the set of both of them next all numbers is jump represented x such that x is all real numbers so let's call it real numbers and when you want to represent it as a set it becomes open interval negative infinity comma infinity so these are the common ways to denote interval notation so let's try some examples so let's say we have an example here so they are asking using the interval notation to indicate all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 2 so how would you write the greater than or equal to 2 so x greater than or equal to 2 so which is the similar to x greater than or equal to a so we know that for this we write it as open interval a sorry closed interval a comma infinity open interval so here also for x greater than or equal to 2 so it becomes open interval 2 so closed interval 2 comma infinity open interval so this is the interval notation for this problem so let me give you an example so that you can try one on your own so use the principles that we talked about just before this and try to solve this problem so pause the video right here and try to solve this problem so let's go to the next one which is the properties of inequalities so the first property is the addition property right so if a if any value so if a is less than b then adding a value the same value to both will not change the value itself so a plus c will always be less than b plus c next for multiplicative property So if a is less than b and c is greater than 0 then a c is less than b c but if a is less than b and c is less than 0 then a c is greater than b c. So which basically means that if a is less than b negative a is greater than negative b. So changing the sign changes the 
uh, inequality changing the sign on both sides changes the inequality so when you multiply a negative number on both sides you have to change the inequality as well so if it's less than it becomes greater than if it's greater than it becomes less than if it's less than or equal to it becomes greater than or equal to if it is greater than or equal to it becomes less than or equal to so let's try and demonstrate this property let's start with the addition property so we have x minus 15 less than 4 how will you find the value for x here is remember that in inequalities we don't do the same as equalities so for the first thing we do here is to take out this 15 what should I add on both sides so the value I have to add is 15 so x minus 15 plus 15 less than 4 plus 15 so minus 15 plus 15 gone so x is less than 19 so when you want to write this as an interval notation so it becomes minus infinity comma 90 so this is the interval notation for this answer so generally always consider to write the answers in interval notation so let's try another problem let's say I have 6 greater than or equal to x minus 1 so here to take out minus 1 I have to add 1 on both sides so 6 plus 1 is greater than or equal to x minus 1 plus 1 so minus 1 plus 1 gone so 7 greater than or equal to x so when you flip this it becomes x less than or equal to 7 remember that when you're flipping it the chi sign will change so when you write it as interval notation so it is less than or equal to 7 which means that it becomes minus infinity comma 7 closed interval right this is how you do the problem try another problem so let's say we have x plus 7 greater than 9 so pause the video right here and try to solve this problem the same way as before So let's go to the next one which is multiplicative property. So let's say we have 3x less than 6. So if I want to find x, what should I do on both sides? So to remove 3 here, I have to divide both of them by 3. So which is multiplying them by 1 by 3. So 3x times 1 by 3 is less than 6 times 1 by 3. Notice that the value 1 by 3 here is greater than 0. So there is no change, sign change. So 3, 3 gone. So x is less than so 3 1s, 3 2. So x is less than 2. So when you write down the interval notation, you get minus infinity command. Let's try another simpler problem. Let's say we have minus 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to 5. So here let me demonstrate how sign change works. So the first thing again, first start with addition where you have to take out minus 1 which means add 1 on both sides. So minus 2x minus 1 plus 1 greater than or equal to 5 plus 1. So minus 1 plus 1 gone, minus 2x becomes 6 greater than or equal to 6 now on both sides we have to multiply by divide it by minus 2 remember that you are changing the sign so minus 2x times 1 by minus 2 is greater than or equal to so which means that 6 times 1 by minus 2 so 1 by minus 2 is less than 0 so which means you have to change the sign from less the greater than or equal to 2 less than or equal to so minus 2 minus 2 gone so you get x less than or equal to so two ones two threes minus three so this can be written as minus infinity comma minus three closed interval this is the answer so let me give you another one so that for you you can try one so five minus x greater than ten so pause the video right here and try to solve this problem now let's try and solve something much more complex let's say I have 4x plus 7 greater than or equal to 2x minus 3 so how would you solve this first things first we have to eliminate the numbers so the first thing that we have to do is take one choose one side for example plus 7 take the opposite of that plus 7 is minus 7 so 4x plus 7 minus 7 greater than or equal to 2x minus 3 minus plus sorry minus 7 now plus 7 minus 7 gone so you get 4x greater than or equal to 2x minus 10 now how will you solve this now is notice that we have to take 2x minus 10 here 2x here is the value that you are looking at so don't change the value change the variable so take 2x here if you want to eliminate 2x here you have to put minus 2x on both sides so now put minus 2x on both sides so 4x minus 2x greater than or equal to 2x minus 10x minus 10 minus 2x so plus 2x minus 2x gone 
you get 4x minus 2x is 2x greater than or equal to minus 10. So now we have to divide it by 2. So 2x by 2 greater than or equal to minus 10 by 2. So my 1 by 2 here is greater than 0. So no sign change. So 2, 2 gone. You get x greater than or equal to minus 5. So which can be written as open interval minus 5 comma infinity. So how would you solve inequalities algebraically? So one way to do it is to take into consideration the idea of how to solve this by simple steps. So the first one is let us take a simple problem. So 13 minus 7x is greater than or equal to 10x minus 4. Now first thing we have to do is eliminate the number for the larger number. So larger variable is 10x here. So this is minus 4. Eliminate the number there. So what will it become? 13 minus 7x. So plus 4 greater than or equal to 10x minus 4 plus 4. So minus 4 plus 4 gone. You have 13 plus 4 is 17 minus 7x is greater than or equal to 10x. Now on this side try to eliminate the variable, the smaller variable. So they have minus 7x here. So add 7x on both sides. So 17 minus 7x plus 7x greater than or equal to 10x plus 7x. So minus 7x plus 7x gone. We have 17 greater than or equal to 17x. So flip the values. Notice that x should always be on the left side. So 17x when you flip it the sign will change. So less 17. So x less than or equal to. So 17x by 17 is equal to 17 by 17. So you get 17, 17 gone. So you get x less than or equal to 1. So which can be written in the interval notation as minus infinity comma 1 closed interval. So this is how you can solve the problem. So try another one. Let us say we have minus x plus 4 less than 1 by 2x plus 1. So pause the video right here and try to solve this problem. So next let us go into the next problem where if you have fractions what do you do. For example let us say I have minus 3 by 4x greater than or equal to minus 5 by 8 plus 2 by 3x. How would you solve this problem? So first things first whenever you want to solve these problems in, in including fractions take the variables on one side. So push variable uh, take out variable on one side. So take the smaller variable which is 2 by 3 here take that out. So which means that minus 3 by 4x plus 2 plus 2 by 3x so put minus 2 by 3x greater than or equal to minus 5 by 8 plus 2 by 3x minus 2 by 3x so plus 2 by 3 minus 2 by 3 gone so we have minus 3 by 4x minus 2 by 3x greater than or equal to minus 5 by 8 now take x common out and just take the variable separately now notice that you have the variables. Now take the LCM of that variables. So when you add the fractions, you have 4 times 3 is 12. So 3 times 3 is minus 9. 4 times 2 is minus 8. Greater than or equal to minus 5 by 8. So x times you get minus 17 by 12. x greater than or equal to minus 5 by 8. Now we have to divide both numbers. So we have to divide both numbers by so minus 17 by 12. So minus 17 by 12 times x by minus 17 by 12 is notice that minus 5 by 8 by minus 17 by 12. Notice that the number minus 17 by 12 is less than 0. So which means that we will have to end up cancelling. We have to end up changing the sign from less than or greater than or equal to, to less than or equal to. So the signs are gone. So you have minus minus gone. Now notice that you have dividing two fractions so cross multiply the denominator. So x less than or equal to 5 by 8 times 12 by 17. So 4 2s, 4 3s. So x is less than or equal to 15 by 34. So this is how you solve an inequality that involves fractions. So let me give you a problem so that for you can try it on your own. So try minus 5 by 6x less than or equal to 3 by 4 plus 8 by 3x. So pause the video right here and try to solve this problem. 
So let's discuss the next topic, compound inequalities. So compound inequalities are rather where rather than seeing one inequality, you see multiple inequalities. Let's take a simple example. Let's say I have a problem 3 less than or equal to 2x plus 2 less than 6. So how would you solve this problem? Again, the same issue. Take the variable. We have to make sure that the variable becomes x, which means that we have to take out plus 2 first, which means that put minus 2 on every one of them. So 3 minus 2 less than or equal to 2x plus 2 minus 2 less than 6 minus 2. Next 3 minus 2 is 1, so plus 2 minus 2 gone, so less than or equal to 2x less than 6 minus 2 is 4. Now there is 2x, we have to divide everything by 2, so 1 by 2 less than or equal to 2x less by 2 less than 4. Notice that 1 by 2 is less than, so greater than 0, so there is no sign change. Remember that only when you sign change when you have a divided by a negative number, right? So 1 by 2, so 2, 2 gone, we have 1 by 2 less than or equal to x less than 4. So how would you write this as an inequality? Notice less than or equal to less than. So whichever side has less than or equal to, write closed interval 1 by 2, comma 4 has an open interval, so put 4 open interval. So this is the interval notation for this uh, problem, for this solution. So most commonly you will end up seeing a lot of interval notation commonly. So make sure that you, you know, get used to interval notation. So let's say, let's take another one. So try this on your own. So 4 less than 2x minus 8 less than or equal to 10. So pause the video right here and try to solve this problem. So next let's try compound inequalities where you have three, var three variables in all parts. So variables in all parts. Let's say we have 3 plus x greater than 7x minus 2 greater than 5x minus 10. So how would you solve this problem is take two parts at once. So this is one part and this is the other part. So you have 3 plus x greater than 7x minus 2 and 7x minus 2 greater than 5x minus 10. So now we can write it as 3 plus x here. So now take the var first variable which is on the smaller side. So plus 3, sorry, the larger side minus 2. So plus 2 on both sides. So 3 plus x plus 2 greater than 7x minus 2 plus 2. So minus 2 plus 2 gone. You have 5 plus x greater than 7x. So x and x. So we take out x here. So multiply minus x or put minus x on both sides. So 5 plus x minus x greater than 7x minus x. So plus x minus x gone. So 5 greater than 6x. So flip it. You get 6x less than 5. So x is less than 5 by 6. So this is one part. The second part, take the second part here. So which, are, which one is the larger one? So 7x is the larger one. So take minus 2. So 7x minus 2 plus 2 greater than 5x minus 10 plus 2. So minus 2 plus 2 gone. So 7x greater than 5x minus 8. So put minus 5x on both sides. So 7x minus 5x greater than 5x minus 8 minus 5x. So plus 5x minus 5x gone. So 7x minus 5x is 2x greater than negative 8. So x greater than, so divide 2 on both sides, minus 8 by 2. So notice that 1 by 2 is greater than 0, so there is no sign change. So 2 ones, 2 4. So x greater than negative 4. So you have two values, where x is less than 5 by 6 and x is greater than negative 4. So how would you write it? So the first thing we want to do here, note down these values first. So x greater than, sorry, x less than 5 by 6 and x greater than negative 4. So the first thing we want to do is draw a number line. So on the number line represent each of these values. So notice that this is 0 and let's say this is somewhere here is negative 4 and somewhere here is 5 by 6. So let's say this value is negative 4 and this is 5 by 6. So both of them are excluded out of the interval so which means that when you write x greater than x less than 5 by 6, which means it goes on this side, right? It pushes this side. x greater than negative x greater than negative 4 becomes on this side. 
from here. So which means that the common part in both of them is this part. So which is between negative 4 and 5 by 6 but both are open intervals. So that's why I have written a circle. So when you put a dot it means it's closed intervals. When you put a circle it means it's an open interval. Notice that it's greater than and less than. So that's why open intervals. So when you write the value you get the interval notation is minus 4 comma 5 by 6 open intervals. So this is the answer for the problem. So combine both the answers to get your final answer. So let me give you something for you to practice. So try 3y less than 4 minus 5y less than 5 plus 3y. So pause the video right here and try to solve this problem. So let me give some more problems for you to practice. So pause the video right here and try to use these problems for practice. So with this we end the lecture on equations and inequalities.